My name is Dalwe Sachi. I'm a heart failure cardiologist at the University Hospital of North Midlands. And I'm going to talk to you about the pathology of heart failure. That is, why does the heart fail and how does it influence your symptoms and signs from the heart not working well? I'm going to start by breaking this down into what makes up the heart. Then I'm going to talk about how bits of the heart may not work as well as they should how that then that affects your symptoms and signs that you may develop and how heart failure is more than just the heart and how it affects the rest of the body and how the rest of the body can affect how the heart works. In terms of the anatomy of the heart, that is what makes up the heart, the heart is made up of blood vessels that supply nutrients, oxygen, all the things the heart needs to work. It's made up of heart muscle, which is different from the muscles you have in your arms and your legs and elsewhere. And this is a very specialized bit of the heart. And it's an amazing thing how heart muscles all fit together, link together and help each other if you like. Heart valves are one way systems for blood to go in and out of different chambers or vessels that link into the heart. The heart also has an electrical system that allows the heart to contract. That's very important and then it's surrounded by a lining to keep the heart safe, to help it work better. And that lining of the heart is called the pericardium. Although we talk about all of these five things making up the heart, other things that affect the heart are whatever goes on throughout your body. Other organs not working well, the um, things that you put into your body, not just some medications, but also things like toxins, like alcohol can affect the heart. The heart, is made up of things within the heart itself, but it can be affected by different things throughout the body. All of these things that we talked about that make up the heart then go to be part of four chambers of the heart. The top chambers are called the atria. The bottom chambers are called the ventricle, and there's a left and a right side. The right side of the heart gets blood from the rest of the body once the body's used up the oxygen and nutrients, and it pumps it into the lungs. The lungs fill the blood with oxygen and then get it to the left side of the heart where it goes into the top of the heart, the left atrium, which then pumps it into the bottom of the heart, the left ventricle, and the left ventricle pumps blood through the aorta and the aortic valve to the rest of the body. The aorta is the main big vessel in the body that takes blood to the rest of the body. Any of those things going wrong, singly or in combination, can cause the heart not to work as well. So the commonest cause are when people have heart attacks, which is blood clots that block up the arteries supplying the heart with nutrients. But you can have problems with heart muscle called cardiomyopathies, heart muscle disease. You can have problems with valves that then make the heart not work well the electrics of the heart with heart rhythm disturbances that are serious. And those, when we have a heart rhythm disturbance, we call it an arrhythmia. The lining of the heart can also cause the heart not to work well. When the heart doesn't work well, there are different ways it adapts to try and make things better. In one group of people, the heart can get a bit bigger and squish less well. When the heart is full of blood, we know what volume of blood is in the heart. When the heart squeezes blood out, we know how much blood has come out of the heart. The amount of blood that comes out of the heart to the rest of the body, divided by the amount of blood in the heart when it is at its fullest, is the fraction of blood that is ejected, the ejection fraction. So some people where hearts adapt by having a lower ejection fraction. Some people, their hearts adapt to not working well by having a normal ejection fraction, but it adapts in different ways for other bits of the heart to work less well, like the left atrium or the right ventricle or the right atrium. So the left ventricular ejection fraction doesn't describe something like why the heart in totality isn't working, but it's a marker that in some people, 
they may need certain special medications that help them more when they have a lower ejection fraction than patients whose hearts have adapted by having a more normal ejection fraction. That doesn't mean the heart is normal. It means that there is some other part of the heart or the blood vessels that are contributing to the heart not working well. So when the heart doesn't work as well as it should, the body is an amazing thing. And what it does, it tries to adapt and help the body cope with that. So people can have a heart that's not working well, but aren't in heart failure. And heart failure occurs when you start to get symptoms and signs of the heart not working well, because the body's way of compensating are overwhelmed. And for some people that can happen very quickly with the heart not working well. For some people, it takes a longer period of time. When the heart doesn't work well, one of the commonly um, described symptoms is fatigue. And you can understand that people can get very tired when the heart isn't working well. And when you do things, you're not able to provide enough oxygen and blood around for your needs. So you can get easily fatigued. But that can also be caused by the systemic changes that's throughout the body changes that happen with heart failure. So when you have heart failure, it isn't about just having the heart that's failing, what happens is that it affects other parts of the body, solid organs like the kidney, the liver, the lungs. It can affect the bloodstream. It can affect the way that you breathe. It can affect your muscles. So heart failure is a pretty nondescript term for a, for a problem that affects the whole body. And as other parts of the body are affected, they can make things worse if you have other problems with those organ systems and therefore it's important if you do have heart failure to remember that this is a problem of the whole body and that's why it's important to keep the whole body well. So we talked about one of the symptoms of fatigue but the other common symptoms are breathlessness again because the heart isn't able to do what your body needs it to do to get all the blood and nutrients around but equally you can have it because fluid can build up in different places and fluid builds up because when the heart doesn't work well the pressure in the heart and lungs increase and that squeezes fluid into different places sometimes in the lung sometimes in the tummy sometimes in the legs and the other symptom that people complain of not just breathlessness from these problems but it's the swelling we call it edema that just means swelling in different parts so those are the three common symptoms of heart failure, which are fatigue, breathlessness, and swelling of the legs. People can have lots of different other symptoms, but those are the three commonest symptoms that people complain of. And to try and improve those symptoms, because heart failure is actually a whole body problem, if you like, it's about trying to improve the whole body. And you'll hear about exercise to improve the muscles and the fitness of the heart and you. You'll hear about trying to optimise all of the other illnesses that you have. Because people who have heart failure tend to have other illnesses as well. Illnesses of the lungs, the kidney, high blood pressure, lots of different things. So that's why it's important to optimise all of those other illnesses. Optimise meaning make you the best that you can be to live well with heart failure. So we've covered today what makes up the heart, how it fits together in the heart, what happens when the heart doesn't work as well as it should and how it affects the body. We've talked about how you develop symptoms and signs of heart failure and that's when you have the heart failure syndrome. That's not just having a problem with your heart, but it's starting to affect your life in terms of symptoms and signs. We've also talked about it being a whole body problem and therefore needing to make sure you not only do you look after your heart health, but you look after yourself in totality.